Welcome. We are so glad you could join us for this online worship as we have a chance to be reminded of our Lord's grace and compassion towards us. So glad you could tune in to be with us. Just one announcement as we begin. We want to thank all of you who have participated already in our planning study as we look towards the expansion of the Shawnee campus. Your input will go a long way in helping us effectively plan for the future of our church. If you have not had a chance to participate in that, I want to encourage you to take the time to do so. Your thoughts, your input is also incredibly valuable. We're hoping to have this data collection portion of this planning study process finished by September 14th. You can return your survey to the office or place it in one of the offering containers if you happen to come to church. Um, the survey is also available online if that's easier for you. You can find all those details in the e-news. Thank you so much for assisting us and giving us your thoughts. Now we continue with our opening song. Oh, God, how 
We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus came to bring us life through His suffering, death, and resurrection. Yet often we have failed to walk in His ways and to follow His commands. Forgive us, Lord, for selfish thoughts and actions. For the times we have determined, we know better than you how life should be lived. Jesus laid down his life for you and took it up again for you. In him is redemption, the forgiveness of sins. May we rejoice in God's gift of forgiveness. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example and give us the strength to follow his commands. In his name we pray. Amen. This is the time in our service where we worship the Lord with our offerings. And as usual, we would invite you to either mail a check into the Mission Campus office or to, to give using one of our online options. This is also the Sunday in which, the weekend in which, we have a noisy collection offering. Uh, obviously, that routine is a little bit disrupted this year. But if you want to bring a bag of coins up to the church and drop those off, we would be happy to collect those as well. Also, if you or someone you love is going through a difficult season in life, we'd encourage you to email those prayer requests into the Mission Campus office so that we as a community of faith can be lifting that situation up in the weeks ahead. The first lesson for this day comes from Jeremiah 15, starting at verse 15. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and take vengeance on me for my persecutors. In your forbearance, take me not away. Know that for your sake I bear reproach. Your words were found and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God. God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of revelers, nor did I rejoice. I sat alone because your hand was upon me, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Will you be to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail? Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you return, I will restore you, and if you stand, shall stand before me, if you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall be as my mouth. They shall turn to you, but you shall not turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you, for I am with you to save you and deliver you, declares the Lord." I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson comes from Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 9. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. 
For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join now in our children's message. Hello, everyone. I brought something with me today, and I wanted you to take a look. What do you see? It's all different types of crosses. And we see crosses everywhere we go, don't we? I mean, maybe perhaps you have a very decorative cross hanging in your home or in your office. Maybe you see crosses as works of art. This piece is made from reclaimed wood of the old stage at our mission campus. Or maybe you have something like this pretty glass cross to sit on a table or a desk. You know, you may wear a cross as a necklace or carry a cross on your backpack or as your keychain. Crosses can even tell a story. This cross tells the story of Jesus' birth and Christmas. This cross tells the story from Palm Sunday. It's made from a palm frond from Palm Sunday. This cross reminds us of Easter with Easter lilies and the Bible to tell the story. Maybe you have some crosses like these two up here, which you received at your confirmation. You know, where you affirmed your faith and professed your faith to others around you. Maybe you've seen just a simple wooden cross. Of course, each Sunday, we see the cross here at church. And you may even see crosses like that on the steeples of church or outside of buildings. We see crosses everywhere. But a cross is so much more than a decorative hanging, a piece of art, or something that we can carry or wear. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus is continuing his conversation with his disciples. And last week we heard Jesus ask his disciples, who do you say I am? And Peter proclaims that he is the Christ, the, the promised Messiah. Well, as Jesus continues the conversation in today's gospel lesson, he is telling his disciples that soon he is going to have to die. And they don't really want to hear those words. They want Jesus to be with them forever. But then Jesus tells them, and he tells us, what it truly means to be his disciples. He says, to be his disciples, we must deny ourselves, take up his cross, and follow him. So what does it mean to deny ourselves and take up the cross and follow him? Well, to deny ourselves means that we turn from our selfish ways, that we place God first and foremost in our hearts and in our lives. To take up the cross means to give up the wants and desires of this world and the things that we need to have. You see, we could be the greatest person, a good friend, a great student or athlete. We could have the best stuff, the most stuff, or the most money while we're here on earth. But none of that matters. To take up our cross and follow Jesus means to set those things aside, to give up our wants and our desires, placing him first in our lives so that we can then go and truly be his disciples to love and to care for others. And that's not easy. You see, we are sinful. And because of that sin, we cannot be perfect. We cannot do those things all the time the way God intends. And God knew this. But he loves us so much that he sent Jesus to be our Savior. And it was on a cross that Jesus died and then three days later rose again. And because Jesus did this, he paid the price of the sins of the whole world, yours and mine and for all people. Jesus gives us the forgiveness of sins and the free gift of eternal life. 
So when we see a cross, we are reminded. We are reminded of that great gift that Jesus gave to us. We are reminded of his great love for us. We are reminded that he gave up everything and paid the price so that you and I can truly live. Living in heaven with Jesus forever. So daily, let us deny ourselves, turn from our selfish ways, take up the cross, and follow Jesus. May we go and be his disciples in this world, loving God first and loving others through our words and through our actions. We're going to pray, and we're going to pray like we do each week. I'm going to pray a line, and then I'm going to ask you to repeat that line and pray that line back to God. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son to die on a cross. Help us to daily take up our cross, turn from our selfish ways, and follow Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next time. The gospel lesson for this day comes from Matthew chapter 16, beginning at verse 21. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, you came and went the way of the cross, suffering pain and rejection and death, that you might win for us eternal life. Help us, Lord, to follow you wherever you may lead us, whatever the cost. We pray in your name. Amen. Do you prefer doing things the easy way or the hard way? Growing up, my older brother always seemed to do things the hard way. He was always going off and getting into trouble, and then my dad would have to come in and dispense justice with a wooden spoon. I like to do things the easy way, and so I learned an awful lot by watching what he did and saying, I don't think I want to do it that way. You know, I still prefer to do things the easy way whenever it's possible, but sometimes the hard way is necessary because the hard way is the only way that will get you where you want to go. In our gospel lesson for today, Jesus takes the hard way for us because it's the only way that will bring us what we need. For the last 16 chapters of Matthew, Jesus has been developing his disciples, teaching them, shaping them, helping them to trust him in the midst of all circumstances. And then in the passage immediately prior to this one, Jesus begins to ask his disciples, who do people say that I am? And, and who do you say that I am? Peter gives the right answer. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus 
responds to Peter by saying, you are Peter, Petros, the rock, the building block. And upon this rock, this solid foundation of your confession, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And then as our text picks up today, there, there's a marked shift in the content uh, of the message of what Jesus shares with his disciples. Matthew tells us as our text begins, verse 21, that from that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things and be killed and on the third day rise. Now up to this time, Jesus has not really talked about his crucifixion, death, or resurrection. This is a new stage in the revelation of his ministry. Jesus is going to have to go the hard way to protect his disciples and all of us, to show them and to show the world that he cares about us. And the disciples are deeply confused by this new piece of Jesus' message. Peter actually takes Jesus aside and begins to rebuke him. Far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. And I'd never really noticed this before. I was studying the text this week, but the English translations really don't do this passage justice. What Peter more literally says is this, mercy to you, Lord, or perhaps May God be merciful to you. Peter wants to offer Jesus the easy way, and Peter genuinely thinks that he is helping Jesus, that is, he is offering to Jesus the good and the gracious plan of God for him. But Peter just doesn't understand what that plan really is. And so Jesus rebukes Peter Get behind me, Satan. You are a hindrance to me, for you are setting your mind not on the things of God, but the things of man. The word hindrance here in the Greek is scandalon, from which we get the word scandal. It literally means a stumbling block. And Peter, the rock, the building block, has now become the stumbling block the block that is in the way of Jesus walking the hard way that he needs to go. Instead of, instead of offering to Jesus the mercies of God, he's actually offering Jesus the same temptation that Satan brought him in the desert so long before. The temptation to take the easy way out, to avoid the hard way of the cross and to save himself. And Jesus could have gone that easy way. He could have ignored the depth and the magnitude of our problem and offered us a few platitudes and said, now you kids be nice, I'm out of here. Would have been much easier for him to avoid all of that pain and suffering, but it would have left us trapped, doomed to destruction. But instead, Jesus went the hard way. Jesus chooses to meet sin head on, going to the cross and the grave, paying the consequence of the sin that we deserve, dying the death that we have earned, suffering that in our place. Jesus goes the hard way for us because it is the only way that leads to life for you and me. And after explaining what his mission is about and what he must do, Jesus then shifts his attention. Verse 24, he says, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. You see, the church, or the people of God, is built on the redemptive suffering of the Messiah. The church is not an ethnic body. It is not a political party. It is not a moralistic association primarily focused on helping us be better people. It is those 
who have been brought from death to life by Jesus walking the hard way for us. And Jesus says that if we want to save our lives, we will lose it. But if we lose it for Him, then we will find it. You can't save your life on your own. Every effort to live your life your way, to fix yourself on your own terms, can only end in frustration and death. You are not the Savior. But Jesus says that if you lose your life for Him, you will find it. Not that you will save it, but that you will find it in Him, in the one who has done what is necessary to save it for you. If we will let go of ourselves, let go of our attempts to fix things and instead rely upon Him and His grace for us, we will find that our life has been saved in Jesus Christ. The church is the fellowship of the redeemed. And as such, our lives should be correlated to this life of Jesus. And as Jesus walked that hard way, opened that way to us, saved us, now he also calls us to walk that hard way. He calls us to deny ourselves, to deny our ego, to deny the belief that we can make it on our own. He, to deny yourself is to dethrone yourself, to take yourself off the altar and stop worshiping yourself so that you can worship God. To deny yourself is to deny yourself the easy way of giving in to those momentary pleasures that seem good at the time but lead only to death. It is to, de to, to deny that impulse within you to thumb your nose at authority and say, well, the rules don't apply to me. It is to deny yourself the ability to let loose with those angry hurtful words that tear people down, which Jesus says is akin to murder. It is to deny that passing lustful thought that pops into your head and to turn away from it rather than following it down to whatever website or app allows you to flesh out that fantasy. It is to keep yourself from slander or criticism, or bad-mouthing, or gossiping about someone, but instead to explain everything about that person in the kindest possible way. It is to turn away from coveting that thing that you see that someone else has, and to not allow it to so dominate your mind that it, that it fills all of your thoughts until you think that you must have that. We can go up and down the list of the Ten Commandments, right? And find all of these ways in which these sinful pleasures arise in us, ways that would lead us away from God and His plan. And resisting them is hard. And Paul says that it is as if those sinful desires are waging war against our spirit. It's hard. It is a battle daily to resist those things. And perhaps the hardest thing of all is that when those sinful desires win a momentary battle, for us to acknowledge those things and repent and to turn back to Jesus. But as the fellowship of the redeemed, this is what we do. This is what Jesus calls us to to deny ourselves, to take up our cross, to follow after Jesus. Now, this is a hard message to preach, and this, I'm sure, is a hard message to hear. I mean, especially with everything falling apart right now, with the coronavirus pandemic and with schools getting ready to open or not open, as the case may be, with, with just the next round of protest and violence going on, with all of the things in the world that are going on wrong, you may be frustrated and tired, and you might be wondering, Pastor, can't you give us an easier way? Can't you at least give us one area of our life when everything is not a struggle? It's a hard thing. It is a hard way. But sometimes the hard way 
is the only way that takes us to where we want to be. I can't offer you this piece of hope. This was a hard message for the disciples to hear as well. They had left everything to follow Jesus. They thought that they were headed towards this new era of success and peace and all of their dreams coming true. And all of a sudden, this guy that they've devoted everything to says that his life is going to end in death. That's a hard thing to make sense of. It was a hard thing to hear. And that's why Jesus gives them this reassurance at the end of this passage. Truly I say to you, there are some who are standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. Well, that promise came true in ways they never could have imagined. The passage just following this one, three of the disciples go up on the Mount of Transfiguration, and they get to see Jesus for a moment revealed in all of His glory as His kingdom comes for a moment on earth. They got to see His kingdom come as Jesus not just died on the cross and was laid in the tomb, but also was raised victorious to new life on the third day. They got to see that kingdom come as Jesus ascended into heaven as he poured out his spirit on Pentecost, and even more as they got to witness and be a part of the rapid expansion of the church across the globe in ways never before seen. All of these things the disciples got to see as God's kingdom was coming here on earth. Well, Jesus makes that same promise to us as well. We too as we deny ourselves and follow after Him, we'll get to see the coming of His kingdom. He has walked this hard way before us, and by walking it, He opened up to us the way to everlasting life. And as we walk this hard way, He promises that He is walking with us, walking beside us, assisting and guiding us as we go through this life. As those sinful desires wage war against us, He promises that His Spirit is working inside our spirit to enable us to resist those things. And we get to see that kingdom come here and now. Every time we say no to one of those selfish desires, every time we extend kindness and mercy to someone here in the name of Jesus, we get to see His kingdom come here on earth. And the ultimate coming of His kingdom is the promise that we shall see His kingdom fully come on the last day where there will be no more suffering, no more shame, no more mourning or crying or death or pain because this old order is passing away. My friends, it is a hard way that Jesus calls us to walk, but it's the only way that leads to life. Jesus walked this hard way for us, and He has opened that way to us, and He promises that if we follow Him, we will see His kingdom come. So take the hard way in the power of Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace, the power of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We join now in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join in the song of the day. Savior, I come.
Let us pray now for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, we give thanks to you that you chose the hard way of the cross to accomplish our salvation. Help us daily to take up our cross and follow you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who need your healing power. We pray for Glenda Bischoff, Myrna Dubois, Gwenda Hawk, Jan Jones, Martha Mocker, Don Molenkamp, Mike Bennett, Angela Klein, as well as those we name in our hearts before you now. Grant to each renewed health according to your will. Continue also to be with those with COVID-19 and bless the efforts that are underway to develop a vaccine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for our leaders. Bless our President Donald, our Vice President Mike, our Governors Laura and Mike, Senators, members of Congress, mayors, judges, and others in positions of authority. Help them to serve with wisdom and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for school administrators, school board members, teachers, parents, and students. Keep teachers and students safe and bless the education of our children. We pray for your blessings upon our Trinity Lutheran Church preschool as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your blessings as we continue our planning study to discuss the space needs of a growing Shawnee campus. Give us your wisdom and insight as we seek your will and your vision as to how to move forward in faith. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for your goodness in our lives. We rejoice today with all those who celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, and other life milestones. 
Help us, even in difficult times, to give thanks for your blessings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We join in our closing song. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power in us. your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize to see the captives hearts released the hurt the sick the poor at peace we lay down
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.